AJ, online interviews or classic face-to-face -face fight week media obligations? What do you prefer? I actually prefer online. Uh, yeah, I do. I don't know why. I feel more relaxed. Like I can come down in my vest. I can stay in my bedroom. I can stay in my own isolation and just chill. So yeah, I like online for sure. A fight camp during pandemic. It's something new for everyone in the fight business. What were the most difficult things that you needed to adapt during those months? It was very difficult. We had uh, rules and regulations in the UK, like only exercise for one hour. So I was doing some shadow boxing in the garden, but I was doing a, a lot of boxing. So I wasn't in the gym much doing too much weights. So I feel very conditioned for boxing. I feel it's helped me, you know, get ready for my fight. So a lot of training in lockdown, I was doing a lot of boxing training in the garden, a lot of skipping, shadow boxing, uh, body weight exercises. And I feel really like a uh, loose and strong. And I, um, I think that's going to do me good for a good competition on Saturday. A year and a half later, did you find an answer for yourself of what happened in the first race fight? As why you weren't on your usual top mental and sport form? Mm, uh, he's a good fighter, Andy. Let's give him the credit. And if I tell you everything that I could have done, it takes away from his success. I want everyone to believe Andy's the greatest thing since Muhammad Ali because it makes me look good that I went in there with a great competitor. So Andy was the better man that night. You brought coach Angel Fernandez in your team before Ruiz rematch and seems he influenced you with pretty nice movement in proof. You showed a different Anthony Joshua working from a distance. Do you plan to use this a bit more safe and technical approach in your future fights starting with Pool of Clash? I, honestly, is whatever Pulev is going to bring to me, I know I have many answers because I, haven't, uh, I had to adapt with Andy. I never boxed like this before, so I, at least I know I can do it. Now, Pulev is very different to Andy. You know, Andy Ruiz is short, very grounded and, you know, very quick hands on the inside. Pulev is up very slim and good jab and right hand so it's completely different style so as i adapted for andy ruiz too i'm gonna have to adapt for pulev and pulev is a very strong aggressive fighter so um i'm gonna meet him as well so we be clash of two good heavyweights how different is anthony joshua from your 2017 version when you initially should have fought pulev um so you know back then maybe people says i have um weaknesses but i believe there were just uh some of the strengths i didn't know i had when i lost i went in strength i went and built up a lot of my weaknesses they got stronger so you know over time i've developed a lot as a as a fighter as a person and I've become more mature. I've won fights. I've lost fights. I've knocked people down. I've been knocked down. Um, I've got back up. I've learned how to box better. I won my titles back. So I feel I'm a lot stronger, a lot more experienced, a lot more wiser. And experience is the best teacher. That's why I'm really looking forward to the fight on Saturday because, you know, all of this is just adding to so much experience I'm going to need uh, for the future fights. Vladimir Klitschko is the only pro fighter who beat Pulev. You helped the Ukrainian in his preparation for Pulev's fight back in 2014. Are you keeping contacts with Vladimir and does he give you some hints regarding the upcoming title fight? I keep in touch with Vladimir. We're friends, not only just for boxing, but we're friends as well. Um, I try not to ask him too much questions because Vladimir versus Pulev is one fight and me versus Vladimir is one fight. Me versus Pulev is, is so different with different people, different styles, different mentality. So 
what I do speak to Klitsch Coaches about is how to set up training camp, how to stay consistent, discipline. This type of information helps me personally. And the only person who can beat me isn't Pulev. The only person who can beat me is myself. So I need to prepare myself. So I only ask Vladimir uh, questions about how I can improve myself, how I can get better. Which is the thing that you remember mostly from your first camp with Vladimir Klitschko? Yeah, you know, after many years in the sport, you, you can become so confident that you train at home, uh, you're relaxed, but he was still training in training camp. He was isolating himself and his discipline for 20 years as a professional was paramount to his success. So I believe what I learned from the champ is that, uh, you know, hard work beats talent. He was very disciplined. He worked hard. Uh, many heavyweights in this business is talented, but only a few want to work hard and take it to the next level. So I learned that from Vladimir Klitschko. In your view, what are the best parts of Pulev's game and on which elements do you think you are going to have an edge over him? Um, Pulev's advantage is he has nothing to lose. He has everything to gain. Um, you know, he's fighting for the people of Bulgaria. So he has um, a lot of power behind him, which is good. And um, he's very confident. You know, he walks with swagger, he walks with confidence, and I like this about him. So I know I'm going to be having a good fight on Saturday. Your previous four fights in UK were at football stadiums with tens of thousands of people who supported you. Many experts note the amazing boost of support you received in the Klitschko fight that helped you to recover from the tough moments in the sixth round. Now, only a thousand people will be in the hall. It's a very unusual atmosphere for you. Any doubts if this could be a factor during the fight? From experience, I, I don't know. I fight many times as an amateur in front of maybe like 100, 200 people. So this was maybe only like eight years ago, nine years ago, not too long ago. So I'm calm. But when Pulev starts throwing left, right, uppercut at my head, I don't worry about the fans. Um, I have to focus on the job. Um, so I don't know how it will affect me, but I'm only focused on war. I'm only focused on the fight. Even if there was a million people there, I was still going there to fight my heart out. And even if there was one person there, like I do every day in the gym, when I spar, you know, four people, three people, I spar like the whole world's watching. Even though it's just me, my small team, I still train like the whole world's watching, so I'm prepared to put on a performance in front of a small audience. Many people around the world are struggling financially because of the pandemic. You and Pulev also needed to cut down your purses. I'm not asking about the exact amount of pay down you agree for, but give us some insight what kind of gesture you made so the boxing fans around the world will be able to see such a great fight in that awful year. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I pay them back by giving them a heavyweight championship fight. The government let a thousand fans in, which is a blessing. That's another payback that people can come out of their house after the lockdown and they can come and witness heavyweight championship fight. And um, I promise them a good night of boxing, one that they'll remember for many years, one that they can show their children. And I hope the main thing is that I can inspire the next generation, the youth, because if they can gain anything from this fight, it can change you know, a whole community for many years. So I hope we can inspire the next generation from what we're doing today. Finally, what would you say to the Bulgarian boxing fans before the fight? Yes, yes. Hello to everyone in Bulgaria. I hope you're well. I have many Bulgarian friends, humble people, very good people as well. And um, I know you're supporting Pulev. Um, I support you guys as well. After the fight, we shake hands, we respect each other. And at the end of the day, we're all one people. So. But now we divide, we fight, and then after the fight, we shake hands, we come together as one people. And then um, long may the respect for boxing and Bulgarian people continue. Thank you, Rara.